I have, for the past six, maybe seven months, been actively and purposefully manipulating what you all see and hear in the news. And that might be a bit of a surprise. That might, you, you might not completely believe me, but it's true. And the reason that this might sound, you might be a little worried about this, is because media is such an important part of our daily lives. Media, at least to me, determines and shapes, molds the lens through which I view the world. And I think, in general terms, media determines what can be said. Media determines who can say it. Media, de media determines how it can be said. And I think most importantly, media determines who can hear it. Cons oh, and consider, for example, whenever I see the news and something's happening, it calls me to action. I can get really happy about some fantastic story that I hear, but I can also get extremely mad and angry and, and go out and the media can tell me to, to change my behavior and it influences me to go and act. Consider, for example, the impact that the press had on the American Revolutionary War. The leaders of the revolution, they had to get together and organize what was at the time 13 very different, very independent colonies and rally them together to eventually defeat what was at the time the most powerful mili military in the world. And when asked how this was done, John Adams, who was later the second president, he said that it was the press, back then the printed press, that, quote, contributed to change the temper and views of the people and composed them into an independent nation. It was Napoleon Bonaparte that called the press the seventh great power. The first six great powers, by the way, were it was France and Germany and England and the other great powers of the day. America didn't make the list back then. A few years later, when the radio was invented, Joseph Godels, who was the, uh, the Nazi propaganda minister, he said that radio was the eighth great power because of the massive amount of influence that it can have on a population. Fast forward a few more years, and television, again, changed everything. Michael West, in a recent speech, he said that when television was brought into the forefront, it changed our living rooms. He said that it literally, we, we rearranged the furniture in our living rooms to seat around the television. And I know in my house, that's the same. And so we see the massive amount of influence that media can have on our lives. And if you think about, especially this television, it's a one-way communication device. There is someone speaking, and there's a family, and many families, listening. It's a one-way communication. And when you think about in, especially in modern times with all the consolidations and media mergers that have happened, it turns out that today there are only five companies who own and control what most of us see and hear on television and on the radio and in at least major newspapers. And that actually led one famous newsman to say, and I quote, news is supposed to keep watch over the powerful so the powerful don't become corrupt. But what happens when the powerful own the news? And it's an, an interesting thought. Uh, by the way, the, the newsman who said this was Ron Burgundy. <laughs> Fast forward now to 2014. The amount of information, the amount of media and news that is created every day is truly mind-boggling. It's absolutely astounding how much information is created. And no one individual could possibly wrangle all of that. No one can read at least all the headlines, and no one could possibly wade through the massive amount of information that we get. Instead, we rely on other people to tell us what news, what products are worth our time and our money. And many of us, you know, we ask this guy, and many of us ask the crowd. And so what has been happening more and more today is that every time we go online, we are looking at the aggregated opinions of other people to tell us what is worth our time and money. And I call this the hive mind. Well, I don't call it that. Many other people call it that. And now, if I'm actually, if I'm working for the news company, if I'm working for Fox News or CBS, and I'm a, let's say, an executive, and I'm sitting in my chair, and I see all of these opinions being shared online, and I see my budget declining, I could think to myself, you know what? Why do we have to tell people 
what they need to hear. With all the new social media, why instead don't we tell people what they want to hear? And it's an interesting concept. By the way, that news executive, again, was Ron Burgundy. <laughs> and so this is happening, right? So if you go onto CNN, you can join the conversation. And anymore, these big news outlets are taking what is popular online, what is trending on Twitter, and rebroadcasting them. So what is happening online now doesn't stay online. What happens online gets picked up by the general news and rebroadcast everyone for everyone to see. And I think that's really fantastic. Um, specifically, what I've been studying the past, again, past few years is a website called Reddit. Um, and on reddit.com, it's purported to be, uh, and I quote, the source of the, the website of what is new and popular online. And the way it works is like this. Anyone can go onto Reddit, and they can create an account. You're completely anonymous. You have a username and a password. You give your email, but they never send you anything. And I can create a post. And a post requires me to send a URL. I just made this up. TED.com slash changing the hive mind. And I titled this post, Best TED Talk Ever. I mean, true or not, this is the post that I'm submitting. And I can push Submit. And it appears in whatever category, subreddit they call it, that I, that I submitted it to. And so you can see now the best TED Talk ever is at the top. And then what happens is that other people come onto reddit.com. They see this. They look at the link. They look at the post. They don't have to click on it. But by looking at it, they are drawing opinions. And they can either upvote, meaning they like it, or they can downvote, meaning they don't like it. And every time you upvote and downvote something, it changes the score. And then as the score grows or decreases, it changes how it's ranked on the website. And so what I've been doing is I go onto Reddit, and I wrote a computer program. The computer program, every two minutes, goes to reddit.com, gets the most recent post. And there are many per second. So I get the most recent post, and randomly, without looking at the title, who submitted it, the time of day, just randomly, I upvote it or I downvote it, 50-50. And I do this every two minutes. And after four days, when the news is settled and people have stopped talking about this particular news article, I go and I look to see, well, what was the result of this post that I manipulated? And for example, this one has 3,972 points. That means probably about 5,000 people upvoted it and 1,138 people, 28 people downvoted it. All right, so 5,000 people voted on this, and this is the eventual score. Now, I've been doing this, like I said, for, for six months. And two minutes over six months is about 150,000 manipulations. If you take all those and aggregate it together, you will see the results are pretty astounding. If I were to upvote something initially, the final score, on average, is quite a bit higher than the average score for any post. If I downvote something initially, then the average score is much, much lower than if I would have done nothing at all. But I think it's better to look at it maybe a, a little bit different way. If you look at it, what appears on the front page of reddit.com, you'll see that if I upvote something, it has a 20% more likely chance of being on the front page of Reddit. And if I downvote something, it has a 12% less likely chance of being on the front page. And as I said before, what happens on the front page doesn't necessarily stay on the front page, right? It can go on to the news media and be rebroadcast to millions of other people. And I think this is a little bit frightening to me, that I can manipulate very easily. Again, this is just one small nudge, one tiny push. And I can change what happens online. But I think even more scary is that this post, and this was the, most, uh, the, the highest rated post of that day. So, 3,972 points is actually pretty high, and this would stay at the top of reddit.com for quite a while. But if 5,000 people voted on this, it turns out that about 2 million people will see that post. And some basic math, you'll see that this translates to about one quarter of 1% of the visitors to reddit.com determine what the other 2 million people see. Right? Again, one quarter of 1% determines what we all see in here online, and then in the news. And that, to me, is kind of an astounding fact. And the internet, in my opinion, like a democracy, only really works well when its citizens contribute. Right? 
And so that actually led one, uh, uh, Alexis Ahanian, who was the co-founder of Reddit, came to Notre Dame a few days ago. And he said something that kind of stuck with me a little bit. He said that the internet will only ever be as good as we make it to be. That's because we control it. We can, we can manipulate, we can change, we can vote on what we like to appear on the internet. And so join me again, I guess, into the confessional. I initially confessed to you how I was manipulating what you all see and hear in the news media. And that's true, and I showed you how I can do it. But I think the tables are turned a little bit too. You guys, every time you like something on Facebook or upvote something on Reddit or retweet something or stumble upon something or dig something, you are manipulating what I see and hear in the news media. And in my opinion, that's okay. The internet, if anything, has shown that it can collectively, we can together on the internet do and accomplish things that are, we could never accomplish individually. And so I leave you with this. Let's make, in the words of Alexis, let's make the internet the best internet we can, and let's do it together. Thank you. <laughs>